uh, about the aircraft of the president. I mean, they, there are many other military aircraft that are lying there that are there oper- in operational on daily basis that uh, get service by the same engineers that, that worked on the president's head. So I just don't think uh, the issue of capacity can be questioned because these are South Africans that would want to be rated as capable of doing that kind of a job. And they also certified by by Boeing itself, which is the manufacturer of, of aircraft. And, and, and I don't think anybody would want to put um, your your name under a GPD like that. And, and, okay, and, and but you know, all that thought, uh, Darren, so what's the source of your information regarding the lack of uh, personnel and competence? Okay, so just this morning, a report came out in Defence Web about the loss of skills as a result of the loss of the AMG contract. Amongst these skills um, is the only person qualified, no, before I start there, uh, Yes, SAA could maintain in Kwasi. It does not. We have the skills locally. The issue, though, is that um, they're currently being maintained by a squadron within the Air Force that acts as an authorised maintenance, um, well, an AMO. So they're the ones who are doing it. And that's where the current issue with capacity lies. There have been discussions about moving maintenance to other uh, areas, to like SAA, for example, but it hasn't happened yet. So with, with, with regards to um, 21 Squadron and skills that, that have been lost in the last uh, two or three years, hmm. Uh, one of them, for example, is a technique called spectro- spectrometric oil analysis program, which is a method by which um, oil from the aircraft is, ana- is analyzed to try and identify um, any problems that have occurred with the engines. At the same time, many of the um, uh, skills have lost, been lost with regards to the avionics and um, engines, as well as the people who are certified in the aircraft. So um, it's not the matter that we don't have skills locally. We do. Mm-hmm. We could maintain the aircraft. The issue is really lack of funds the immediate loss of these skills and the difficulty in replacing them within the, within the Air Force. Okay. Uh, uh, Puteho, just in terms of where the money is going to come from, that it's not necessarily going to take away from a national imperatives, that of providing decent health, housing, education, and uh, a, social, uh, a social safety net, that this budget essentially will come from the defense. And Darren's argument is that uh, still, uh, that, that the funds there are depleted and uh, the country's ill uh, is in an ill position to afford this aircraft. What's your view? If, if, I'm, if I may put this to you, would you want to compromise your, your safety um, because you, 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 you don't have money? I mean, security is it, it, it's key for you uh, in, 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 in the layman's terms. I would imagine security is key for you. In this case, we're talking about the un, 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 unworthy of this aircraft, this particular aircraft, and, and surely you cannot compromise that. Whether money is there, money is not there, what do we do? What do we do? Are we, are we saying we should continue flying an aircraft even though the engineer said it is not uh, capable to do the job that it's supposed to be doing? Is, is that what we're saying? If we're saying so, um, how are we going to, to pass the question of, of, of the, the Civil Aviation Authority? as far as the compliance is concerned. Well, though this aircraft is, is, is a military aircraft, it's not uh, uh, subjected to, to um, civil aviation authority. But in terms of the airworthiness of this particular aircraft, how are we going to pass that? We cannot equate that to any amount of money. This is the first um, uh, 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 citizen of the country, and we, can, we cannot compromise the security All and right. the safety of their own. Yeah. All right, carry on, Darren. I actually agree with that. Um, I believe there is an imperative or a serious need to increase the funding of maintenance within the Air Force. I agree that it is not at all okay that uh, you know, these squadrons are currently lacking funding. Um, there's something to keep in mind though, is a larger aircraft will be harder to maintain and much more expensive to maintain. So we're going to be better off in terms of safety by properly uh, capacitating either the Air Force or whoever else maintains this aircraft and ensuring that the aircraft is properly maintained and then safe. Uh, if we have the current situation and we just acquire a new aircraft on top of that, it'll become even worse because now we have a larger aircraft, more complex, more expensive, and uh, no change to funding. 
All right, Darren, we also earlier on asked our viewers to go online on ANN7.com uh, to participate in our online uh, poll and the results on our debate. We asked our viewers if Inquazi frequent breakdowns are hurting South Africa's global image. 51% of respondents said yes and 49 said no. So it's pretty much a uh, you know line is drawn in the sand. It's like almost like a 50-50 split. But just for the uh, ease of South African taxpayers primarily to say, um, going forward, even when this particular asset is procured, it's not only uh, the privy of President Jacob Zuma, it, it will be uh, an asset of the state. The next president, whoever that would be, will still have use of it, that it's a long-term investment. You don't think it's necessarily money well spent? Correct. So um, that is true, but in quasi can stay for you know many years to come, can fly safely for many years to come. To give an example, um, aircraft lifespans are measured in terms of cycles. Um, which is effectively a cycle is taking off, landing. And, um, and Quasi is up to about less than 10,000 cycles mm. uh, and accumulating less than 1,000 a year. But if I recall, you were saying that Quasi has to make numerous stops for refueling, sure. uh, you know, because it's not a long haul jet necessarily, and it, you know, we needed a, a bigger jet to accommodate more VIPs. Sure, but the, the point there is that um, a 737 like well, a BBJ, like um, Quasi, has a service life of approximately 75,000 cycles. And right now it's only at 10,000. So it really is, is very young in terms of its lifespan. And in terms of, of the number of stops, uh, to most destinations, there aren't, there aren't stops required. It's only to your furthest destinations like Beijing, uh, Perth, and then Sydney, and uh, New York City. All right. We'll, we'll come back and look at international benchmarks, uh, especially for developing economies like ours. But uh, let's take Douglas in the Val. Thanks for calling, Douglas. And what's on your mind? Cindy, it's Cindy, hey. Correct. Cindy, as far as I'm concerned, this president should be more in the country than out of the country. He's supposed to be running the country, not not gallivanting all over the show. Oh, and but Douglas, that's the same thing that from. was said about Tabombeke, saying that he's more interested in African renaissance and dealing with issues of stability on the continent that he was hardly ever here. And are you saying that he should be more in the country than outside the country? Yes. Because he's the president of South Africa. He's not the president of Africa. And he should be yeah on call and stop giving the other ones uh, because he wants to be all over the show. I think it's high time that our money starts staying in the country and he stops flying all over the country, all over the world with the taxpayers' money. So that's one reason why I don't think he needs another jet because he should be in, in, in the country and not gallivanting all over the show. All right, Douglas thinking that, you know, international trades and uh, discussions and uh, <clears throat> trade missions are more about gallivanting. But Putero, just uh, in, in wrapping up and summing this up, in terms of international best practices, when it comes to similar economies um, and developmental states like ours, how then do they ferry their president, uh, the, the deputy and the, the executive? Putero? All right, I think we've lost him. Darren, maybe you can tell us. How, how, how sure. do we compare to our developmental counterparts? So in terms of countries with our similar GDP and uh, location far from the major points of the world, we're quite uh, similar. Most countries have a BBJ or a similar type, size aircraft. Um, you know, once you go to the larger aircraft, your 777s, 8030s, 8040s, your cost does go up quite a lot. So you really have to be careful to justify it, and it has to be really worth it. Um, so yes, most countries still, still use same size aircraft. Okay, but these aircrafts, particularly for Douglas and Rudy, in the sense that we, you know, when we touch on the security of the head of state, it's not like you and I just having basic immobilizer or, you know, sure. high walls and that kind of thing. This is the head of state. If anything were to happen to the, pro to the, to the president, mm -hmm. there, there could be anarchy, there could be all sorts of attacks and assaults onto the country. So maybe we, we tend to discount or undermine the importance of the, the, the presidency itself, not necessarily you know, yes. whether we, we like the president or not. I believe there is a popular misunderstanding about the need for VIP jets. And, I mean, personally, I see no problem with it. Provided they are not abused and they're used correctly, uh, it makes sense. As I said, most countries can't be reached directly by commercial flights. Those that can very often are served by airlines that are not safe. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it just isn't, it's, it's not practical. Uh, VIP jets, uh, I mean, there's a reason businesses very often use VIP jets as well. It, it just makes business sense for them. Yeah. Because uh, very often your schedule is not planned months in advance. 
uh, sometimes you have to, <coughs> sorry, you have to intervene quickly to resolve a crisis. Yeah, but what, what about localizing, let's say, the manufacturing or assembling of this particular jet? Uh, you know, if there's a skills transfer that will, will happen uh, and uh, benefit South Africa's economy, uh, with the president being more on time and reliable, etc. What are the benefits of having a uh, VVIP jet or a presidential jet as proposed? Well, at the moment in the RFO uh, and the RFI, there are no local components. Uh, something that has been suggested by local industry is to acquire an ex-SAA AT40, and which for about, I think, 400 million rand, and to equip it locally. The problem with that, though, is that there are no companies locally that are um, currently certified to do that. A VIP interior is heavily custom. Virtually every part is custom made. Um, nothing is standard. Mm -hmm. So it would be quite an effort to get to that point. I spoke to some people from local industry or local companies who could be involved, and um, their feeling was that they'd be cautious about doing it for a once-off. Um, and this was a guarantee that they'd have future work going forward, uh, which isn't necessarily the, tr the case because um, this market is quite well served already by companies in the, sorry, <coughs> in the UK, uh, US, UK, and, and well, sorry, the US, Europe, and, and Asia. Mm. So it is a possibility. Um, it's something we should look at, in my view, but it won't necessarily happen, and it's not currently in the plans for the RFI or the RFO. The okay. RFI being the request for information, the RFO being the, the request for offers. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that death by acronyms. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Darren.